So high level is an absolutely monstrous software and there's so much to learn. And sometimes people get so caught up in trying to learn everything at once. And today we're gonna kind of break that myth and give you a specific order that we've been teaching our clients and our students for over the last four years. That's gonna make it a really easy process for you to learn the fastest possible way to get you to be a master inside of high level. So stay tuned and build along with us. All right, now usually this information is usually shared only with our students and our coaching clients, but today what I'm gonna do is show you the proper way and the order for you to fully understand and learn high level. I'm gonna make you understand that high level is such a big software, it's all in one, it has so many encompassing features, and sometimes it can be incredibly overwhelming. Well, what I'm here to share with you is that if you take high level in bite-sized chunks, you actually learn faster and you actually understand how everything kind of goes together. Now, I'm gonna give you the order kind of in a sequence that we're gonna follow, and I'm gonna use my screen to kind of hopefully have that embedded in your head so when you're doing this for yourself and for your clients, you're actually gonna make it a little bit of an easier process for you. So the first thing that we do when you look at my screen is that we teach individuals is understanding opportunities and pipelines. We use opportunities and pipelines as a starting point for teaching high level in the sense that it helps us map the customer journey and what you have to understand with high level with being an all-in-one solution, the better the customer journey is mapped, the better an understanding of what has to happen in an order with your particular client. Now, the reason why we start with pipelines and opportunities is before we build anything inside a high level, we build it inside the pipelines and opportunities because we build it in the order that we want the customer experience to be. So we first learn how to master opportunities and pipelines. Now, right after that, the second thing that we learn to master is if you go into the sites area, there's this area towards the back end here up on top, which is forms, surveys, quizzes, and chat widgets. Now, the reason why this is the next one is a lot of these are usually starting actions for a customer. Meaning if you go into my website, the first thing you're probably gonna do is fill out a lead magnet form. Maybe you're gonna fill out a survey. Maybe you're taking a quiz or maybe you're interacting with my chat widget. If I understand those as starting actions, the reason why we learn these next is probably because that's the next course of action that you're gonna take if you're one of my customers. So I go for my planes and opportunities and then I kind of switch over to forms, surveys, quizzes, and chat widgets. The reason being is because if I learn how to master these, I will understand that those are usually my starting actions for my customers. Then most times out of like nine out of 10, I would say you're usually booking an appointment or you're taking the next action. Now, a lot of companies and businesses usually require some kind of intro, some kind of demo or a consultation call of some sort. So the next, you kind of guessed it at this point, is going to be calendars. Now, because High Level offers so many calendars, service calendars, collective booking calendars, round robin calendars, class calendars, event calendars, personal calendars, it's always beneficial to learning calendars next. Because again, calendars are a starting action for usually new leads or people coming into your system. They can also be an incredible source of business interaction when it comes to certain things like coaching services or even when you're selling high ticket items. Hey, we wanna interrupt this video for a quick little minute to just let you know that I hope you're enjoying this video. We wanna thank you for being here, but more importantly, we are hoping that this content helps you do whatever you're trying to do inside a high level. We also want to let you know that you have options to get additional help. We offer a $197 a month VIP coaching program Program that includes four days of office hours, first come, first serve with Andy or myself, where we go in and we answer any of your questions that you might have live with a group setting for other people that are also working in high level. We also have a VIP group where we answer questions directly one-on-one -on -one with anybody posting in that group to give you the absolute best support. It also comes with a bunch of other features, including our funnel brick system, our little mini course, and more importantly, a couple guides that'll help you through this, and also including our SOP library that we use for pretty much everything inside of our agency. So thank you for this quick little minute, but more importantly, importantly, go back to the video, get whatever you need. And if you have any questions that we can answer inside the video, just drop a comment on the video and we'll make sure to answer whenever we get a chance. And now back to the show. So understanding calendars becomes the next one we want to do. Following after that, high level is all about making money. So it's important for you to understand everything in the payment area on the left-hand side. Now, if you go into the payment area, kind of look up on top, you have invoices and estimates, documents and contracts, products, coupons and integrations for your actual payment interactions, right? Now, the reason why this is really important is because at any given time throughout your customer journey, you're gonna get to the point where somebody is gonna wanna either pay you or you're gonna wanna collect money. Well, if you get the products and areas all kind of figured out, this becomes like the kind of golden rule of understanding that this is, again, the customer flow. They were an opportunity and a lead. I created some of my starting actions like calendars, forms, surveys, 
And now it may be getting to the point where I got to collect some money from my customers and I want to have the ability of doing that early on. The other thing is you got to understand a lot of these things are going to come together in a few seconds as I go over the next kind of stages that we go through. Now, the big part of high level and being an all in one tool is the ability of communicating with our clients in a variety of different channels. The reason again, why that's important is because I want to be able to communicate with my client in any way they want to communicate with me. So the next stages of what we do is understanding the communication channels like marketing where we have our social planner where we can post things inside of everything that we do, whether it's in Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and so forth and so on. We have emails, the general campaigns and templates that we're gonna use inside of regular day-to-day -day communication where we can do little snippets or basically write longer emails that we can give out to clients, or we can put them in a campaign if they come into one of those starting actions like taking a quiz, filling out a form, or maybe I just want some email reminders that are going out for my client that did the appointment booking. Now, the other thing to fully understand in here is that if I want to communicate by text messaging, the next thing I want to do is go into settings and go into phone numbers and start understanding how to get basically up with my text messaging services. Now, text messaging in itself is a little difficult because you have to be approved. So there is a bunch of stuff that you have to fully understand here, like telemarketing laws, registering your brand, registering your campaign, understanding the difference between text and voice and what a segment is. And all these things are covered in other videos, but again, email and text messaging becomes the next ones that I do wanna make sure I have involved. And then, then finally is the integrations of understanding the different things I can integrate to, like Facebook and Instagram Messenger. Those two things are very viable communication options that I wanna make sure I include in my circle of communication with my clients. And understanding and having those readily available become a very big factor in everything that I try to do as far as communication in between my clients. So connecting your Instagram and your Facebook inside the Messenger area is very, very important, along with, again, your email and your text messages. Well, finally after that is understanding that basically all these things like my forms and my surveys and my order forms to collect payments and so forth, or even my calendars need to exist somewhere in the digital landscape. And that's where we move into funnels and websites. All those things we built, the calendars, the forms, the surveys, the quizzes, the chat widget, you know, even interactions as far as communicating with my customers all have to start somewhere digitally online. And that's where funnels and websites come into play. And that's where they're coming into the place that they do. We teach that at that point, because at this point we have all these assets that we can add onto our funnels and onto our websites. So understanding that has kind of that last area happens to be where you want to go. The other thing about funnels and websites are they have a design element to it. Design, believe it or not, can take very long. When you're first starting out, we always recommend using templates because templates make it easier for the person who's not very design inclined to basically have a basic setup that you can improve over time. The greatest thing about funnels and websites is the fact that at any given time, you can go back and you can adjust them and make them as nice looking as you want, more you know, kind of outgoing, more kind of design, more pretty, whatever you wanna do, make them prettier, make them uglier. It doesn't matter. The great part of it is, is that once you kind of work off of a template, and you're really starting to understand design at any given point in time, you can go back and redesign the thing that you first started and created. Now, right after all of that, the next stage we usually jump into is memberships because a lot of people nowadays is want either a community or a membership. So if you click on here, you now have courses and client portal and communities because a lot of businesses now really want to have the community or membership aspect. And this is why we do it right after funnels and websites because on a funnel on a website, you're probably going to be giving away your community or your membership. And again, having that easy access makes it really good as you're kind of going in that order. And then finally, when it's all said and done, we go to probably the most important area out of this whole entire thing, and that is automations. The reason why automations kind of fall into that last place is because all those things that we created, the funnels, the chat widgets, the invoices, the orders, the communities, the memberships, all can be automated in some form or fashion using automations. Now, the thing about automations that I want you to understand, when we create one, and like I'm doing from now from scratch, they have a starting trigger. Now, if you notice all those things that we mentioned before, forms, interactions, Instagram, surveys, customer replying, email events, call statuses, are all what we call starting actions inside of our workflow. Meaning the customer takes those actions or you take those actions and the flow of the automation start. 
And that's why we kind of almost save it for last to master because there are so many things you can do and automate and make more efficient in your business with automations inside a high level. So again, you have what we call a starting trigger, which happens with all the things we mentioned before and more. Then we have actions, which are things that start after we have that trigger, that starting action, like somebody filling out a form. And maybe I want when somebody fills out a form, they get granted access to my community. The action is the thing that happens after somebody does the action or you do the action. And that's why automations we save towards last. And now considering the age that we're in, the other new factor that we have is all the AI stuff we have inside of here, which is conversational AI, which is voice AI, and all the different AI things that keep on growing inside the software. Because all that AI is gonna do is enhance the, all the things you've currently built and give an AI element to it. But if you only jump to AI as like the starting point, you're gonna get lost in all the other possible things you can do. Now, what's great about this is, is that any given time, anything you learn, you can keep applying if you follow the order in the way we told you to learn. Now, there's a lot of other features after AI that are coming about that you can leverage and use. But honestly, if you follow that order, the other features actually become really easy to understand and learn. So hopefully this helps, gives you a bunch of clarity. There's a bunch of videos inside of our channel that help you do all of this. And if you follow this particular order and write it down, try to learn it in this way because I guarantee you're going to have way better results. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.